So welcome to this video from uh, section C2.5 salts and electrolysis for Keystone for additional science. Um, today we're going to actually look at the section on electroplating or section A. <coughs> electrolysis is used to electroplate objects and it may be used for a variety of reasons which include copper plating and silver plating. In essence we, uh, we use the idea of electrolysis here which we've already covered um, where positive um, connection here to a switch that runs current all the way through a copper anode um, goes into a solution of copper sulfate, so CuSO4 um, it comes out again the current through a copper cathode and we go around here, don't we and we go to a rheostat, so the electricity goes through the bar goes round, around, 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 around and then out again through the wire and to the ammeter which tells us what the current is and we've got the negative connection. Now remember of course in electrolysis especially for the higher tier people you need to think about the fact that it's electron flow and the electrons flow from negative to positive because they are negative particles that's the reverse of conventional current which is normally positive to negative so we've got a reverse flow of electrons and what we're doing is we're making simpler substances at the electrodes from the copper sulfate so here we go, let's have a look. There's two watches here, one's been, uh, I think it's chromium plated and one's been gold plated. Sometimes they actually use titanium nitride to coat uh, gold looking watches and then they would put a, a gold coating on top of it. And the idea is simple really, the gold actually rubs off fairly quickly but it leaves the titanium nitride which is, um, which is actually a lot, a lot um, harder wearing, uh, more useful. We've also got here, we've got a brass um, tap and it's been coated with chromium to stop it tarnishing, make it smoother to touch, more aesthetically pleasing. Similar sort of thing with the motorbike. So if we have a look at the detail then, so we're looking at a surface change in the property of metals or maybe plastics, um, a use of electrical current, it mobilizes metal cations um, from an electrode immersed in the solution to deposit on the conducting substance. The reasons are its cost mainly, um, improved properties such as strength, chemical resistance, they uh, reduce the abrasive wear, you get corrosion protection, and there's also the aesthetics of it. The key things for foundation students to think about, for example, what are the bubbles formed at the anodes for one? So if we look at this equation, copper sulfate, CuSO4, aqueous in water, plus water, of course, liquid, go to Cu, 2 plus aqueous, plus O2, gas, plus hydrogen, um, which is a positive, and that's aqueous as well, and that then bubbles off. So we've got a splitting up into sim simpler substances. Now at higher tier, you're required to actually look at the two reactions, one at the cathode and one at the anode, as separate things. So remember back to electrolysis, it's copper 2 plus aqueous plus two electrons makes copper. Now they could quote it like that, or they could quote it with the two electrons on the other side, so it's copper 2 plus, is copper, take away two electrons. So that's called the half equation for the cathode. The anode is a similar idea, but it's water that's split into oxygen and hydrogen and four electrons. And again, I could move the electrons to the other side of the equation if I wanted. You could see it either way. You need to learn the table of negative ions in solution and the elements given off at the positive electrode. That helps for higher and foundation. Higher and foundation as well, it's thinking about that if there is a substance in solution, a certain element will be formed at the negative electrode and a certain at the positive. So if we produce copper, we're going to produce chlorine or copper and oxygen, hydrogen in all these cases, and chlorines or oxygens. Now there's tests. There's one test for oxygen, which is um, the glow test with a splint. There's a test for chlorine gas, which is bleaching of litmus paper. And finally, the test for hydrogen gas is the squeaky pop test, isn't it, where you ignite it and it explodes in a test tube. So there we have electroplating as an application of electrolysis. Thank you for watching this video.